Hello and welcome everybody to this session. Um, thank you so much for coming. We are going to take you through the journey of putting together a co-production together in one hour, and that would normally take anywhere between 18 months and three years, maybe five years even. <laughs> we're going to do it in one hour, so we're going to keep it top line, but um, we've got an amazing panel here, and I just want to give a shout out to our producer, Justine Bannister, our executive producer, um, Alison, and our assistant producer, Elizabeth Wilson. Um, so just very quickly, how many of you have either never done an international co-production or are struggling to figure out how to do it? Can you put your hands up? Okay, that's a, that's a, that's a decent amount. So what we're going to do is we're going to, um, we're going to talk about the complexities of finding the right partner that has sort of complementary skill sets, um, touching on tax credits, um, making sure that you can get financing from every possible avenue. Um, it is always a complex and difficult journey, and our panelists are going to talk us through different ways of doing this. We hope to make it really practical, quite fun, and importantly, you don't have to uh, write all the percentages and the information down, because at the end, we're going to have a massive QR code up there, which has got the most incredible takeaway which the production team have worked on. Um, it's got information on tax credits in all the key territories, also top tips, and some of the main markets where you can um, go and explore co-production opportunities. So, with no further ado, I'm going to have the panel introduce themselves, just their names and their titles. I'll start with Katarina, please. Hi, I'm Katarina. I'm VP of Sales for Kids and Family Content at BBC Studios. Hi, I'm Agnes. Just Agnes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with the Shaw Rocket Fund, and I'm the president and CEO. Hi, I'm Philippe Alessandri. I'm the CEO and the founder of Watch Next Media, and also chairman of Animation in Europe, which uh, is a federation of producers association within uh, the European Union. Hi, I'm Adriano Schmid. I'm Vice President of Content for PBS Kids in the US. Hi, I'm Patricia Hidalgo. I'm the Director for the BBC Children's and Education. OK, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to run a co-production simulation by taking a fictitious project for an animated series for preschoolers, introducing Bertie the Sloth Adventures in Slow Motion. What's not to love about that? <laughs> 52 times 11 minutes, it's an animated journey into empathy in 3D for preschoolers. Vibrant 3D animation, catchy songs, and heartwarming stories. Bertie is going to combine excitement, humor, and valuable life lessons underpinned with a light social emotional learning. So you can assume that I'm actually representing the creator. We have already pitched the show in depth to all of the panelists, so it's time now to take the next step and explore options for securing broadcast production investor partners who are appropriate for the needs of this particular project. So we're going to ask the other speakers what they can bring to the project, how they might like to partner with us, and I'm going to start with Patricia. And I just want to say, Patricia, thank you so much for loving Bertie the Sloth. <laughs> um, we're so delighted that this might be potentially a commission for BBC yeah. Children's. Um, please, can you tell us how that might work, how you might partner with us, and what, how, how this kind of a, a, an arrangement works for you? Well, it's complicated, isn't it? It's complicated. Yes. <laughs> and more so because, you know, at the BBC, um, and rightly so, because we are um, funded by the license fee, because we're a public uh, service broadcaster. We have uh, some commitments, we have quotas, we have obligations that we have to think about. And we have to juggle all this for as much as I love Bertie, because I love Bertie. Good. It all depends. You know, is it going to be a UK commission? Is it going to be uh, a foreign commission? Is it going to be an acquisition, a pre-sale? You know, where are you going to make it? Is it in the UK? Is it going to be in Scotland? Is it going to be in Northern Ireland? I mean, believe me, there's a lot of different parameters that are going to um, determine whether we come in or how much money we can invest in one of uh, these uh, fantastic shows. So, you know, starting uh, the first thing, so I'm going to take you through uh, some of these uh, different complexities so you can understand what we have to deal with at the BBC every time we make a decision that we love a show like Bertie and we want to bring it to our audiences. Um, starting with, you know, of course, you know, most of you probably already know that we have two linear channels still in the market, which are leading, and they do need quite a lot of content, but not as much content as a streamer does. And what streaming has done for us is that it has meant that we have had to invest in much more content than we did in the past. Not only that, is the production values that we are 
expected to deliver, for, to deliver high impact content that is going to really attract our audiences. It's making our slates much, much more expensive. And contrary to what some people might think, the UK still does not have competitive uh, global uh, tax credits. If it did have uh, the same tax credits as in Italy, which are 40%, or even Spain, we could actually be um, basically fully funding a lot of these shows, but we can't. So it means that, you know, I mean, you heard me say here before last year, we need to come into uh, partnerships with uh, commissioning with other public service broadcasters, like, you know, with PBS and others across Europe, to be able to make uh, ends meet. And if you go to the next slide, I just give you a bit of a sense of, you know, if we're thinking about the whole of the slate that we have across uh, Children's for Commissioning, and I'm giving you your 26, 27, uh, because I want to look into the future for you to understand where we're going. Um, we have most of our spend is, of course, going to go to commissions that are made in the UK. That's 77% of that um, uh, budget is going to go there. We have 7% for foreign commissions, so depending where, where uh, you know, Bertie ends up, we might have a bigger pot of money or a smaller pot of money for Bertie. Um, acquisitions, again, is quite a smaller number, but as you can imagine, we need a lot of volume of acquisitions, so we're going to be paying uh, much less per episode if it's an acquisition because we need the volume. And, and of course, we need to continue relicensing a lot of the great content that we are, you know, uh, our audience wants, so that's the 7% that needs to be kept for that. If we go to the next slide, when it comes to the amount of hours that we are commissioning every year, we have 350 original hours that we commission every year. And when you look at where the spend is, is, is falling, it's quite uh, even between factual entertainment and animation, but don't let that make you think that we're commissioning the same amount of hours from each, because as you can imagine, um, uh, factual entertainment is less expensive than animation, it takes shorter to make. But then, in order for us to be able to deliver all the animation that we need for our audiences, we're going to be looking for partners. Mm -hmm. So the amount of money that we have allocated for those animation projects that have international appeal, like Bertie, mm -hmm. is going to be uh, smaller than the amount of money that we might be giving to our fact entertainment, because we know that that is going to be very locally relevant and probably will not travel. And then with drama and comedy, um, it's a bit bigger budget. There we have both very local shows, which will not travel, we know that, and we have international shows as well. We go to the next slide. Now here comes some more complexity. Of course, you know, we have to think about all the UK. We really want to bring um, all our commissions across the UK, and we have a commitment. We have quotas at the BBC. These quotas are for the whole of the BBC. Children and education actually um, contribute to these quotas very substantially, especially outside of the M25. So if Bertie is going to be outside of the M25, then I have a bigger pot of money for Bertie. Noted. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, Scotland, Northern Ireland, you come to us with, uh, with a, a project that is going to be based in one of those, or, or, or Wales. Um, we're very excited about that. Okay. If you go on to the next slide. So how do we uh, fund uh, BBC Children's uh, UK Commissions? Well, we know, as I said before, because we have, uh, we're hungry, we have a big amount of hours that we need to provide for iPlayer, we really need to get our budgets to be stretched much, fur much further than, than they used in the past. So in the last three years, we have doubled the amount of money coming to our slate from international uh, parties and third party funding. And that means that we have 40% more money than we used in the, to have in the past. Mm -hmm. That's good. To put That's towards, good. towards content. It doesn't mean we're making much more content because the content is more expensive mm -hmm. and because the tax incentives that we have in the UK do not allow us to be able to um, you know, subsidize everything. So, mm -hmm. so if we go to the next slide, just to give you a sense, we do, we are, um, aware that you know it does take time, it's going to take time. I mean, some of the shows that we have commissioned two years ago just got 
into production right now, so I know that that's going to take time. So we are looking already at commissions for 26, 27. 20, 24, 25 is basically all uh, committed. Yeah. And you can see already quite a lot of that content uh, slots are committed for both uh, CBBs and, and CBBC, but they're, they're, they're still are. So we have, we're looking into the future. And the na last, last slide I'm just going to share with you, and this is just um, to give you a sense of what is it that you know, the BBC will come with you know, for a commission. If it's a, for us, a commission has to be a minimum of 20% of the, of the budget that we would be investing. Uh, but it can go up to, as you can see, 72% or even 80%. It all depends on the show and what the show means to our audience and you know, to what we're trying to achieve. In the case of uh, uh, Odd Squad, which is great that Adriana is here with us today, this is actually a co-commission between the BBC and PBS. And we basically put the same amount of money, which was great, so with just another big broadcaster mm. and all of the different tax credits, which I know we're going to talk about later, we can actually, you know, green light a series. Mm -hmm. Nicole and Jay, which some of you have been, you know, heard from, from, uh, um, from Kate, you know, it's something that is so important to us because it's really relevant to our audience. Yes, we see a lot of dogs and cats and what have you in animation, but we need to have representation. We wanted to make this show. Unfortunately, nobody else believed in it, except for our distributor, mm -hmm. Cake. Um, so thank you, Ed, for that. Um, so we just put, had to put all the money. This means that because we had to put all the money here, we have to find money elsewhere for everything else. So mm -hmm. that's just to give you a bit of an understanding of, of what we do. And, and if you have any questions, of course, you can always go to our um, commissioning website. Uh, which has a lot more information than I can give you today. Thank you. So that's amazing. We have the BBC on board. Thank you, Patricia. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> <laughs> <Woo -hoo. laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> there's nothing like being able to go to other broadcasters with a strong anchor broadcaster on board, so it means the world. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, so the BBC Commission in this scenario represents more or less 20% of the overall budget. This percentage can vary, though, as Patricia just mentioned. So we now have to find studios and investors to close the finance gap. It's a big gap still. Um, now, um, as it happens, we have Adriano from the PBS, <laughs> um, PBS Kids right here. and. Um, but before I go to Adriano, because you mentioned that a UK studio, Patricia, would really make a difference, it unlocks more money, mm -hmm. and also it means that you know some of the some of the things that you need to qualify as your U UK content makes a difference to you as well. Um, we are going to look for a UK studio uh, based outside of the M25, <laughs> and um, guess what? Uh, I'm so happy to say, <laughs> uh, in the in the 22nds since that <laughs> happened, uh, we have got a UK studio on board, which is fantastic, <laughs> with the uh, tax credits that come with that. So that's a really good start. We've got BBC, we've got our UK studio and UK tax credits. There's still a big gap. Now, there are so many lovely synergies between the public broadcasters, and I know that all of you public broadcasters have, have been speaking a lot about collaborating on projects yeah. because you know that you can't on your own have the budgets to, to, to finance things on your own. So, and we know you have a precedent already with PBS Kids, as you just mentioned. And so um, I'd like to turn to you, Adriano. How might you partner on something like this? Would it be interesting for you? Can you talk us a bit about your process and how a partnership would work for you in particular? Yeah, no, and thank you for bringing this project. And, you know, having BBC on board uh, definitely helps uh, the conversation. Um, I'm not going to get into as much detail as uh, Patricia on how we are funded and, and how we are supposed to um, act in our market, which is the U.S. market. I kind of want to give you all an overview and then make clear some of the key parameters for us to make sure that, you know, we all go into Birdie. Everyone that is going to be part of that will want the same series and not sort of have different goals, which we all know how important that is. But then taking a step back, this is a, our family album. This is sort of a, a you know, a portraits of uh, several of our characters. And I hope uh, you are all familiar with uh, most of them or some of them. 
And this is important uh, to us because we are uh, always thinking about, uh, we're focused on the US audience, uh, we're, we're focused on representing them, showing them that the world is full of possibilities and so are they. Um, and then that means also kind of putting them on screen. Uh, but, you know, we also like Birdie, uh, and then we kind of feel that uh, there's, a, uh, uh, there's an opportunity there. The second main parameter for us is um, the curriculum. So the, all of our content is curriculum-based. So Alex, representing the producer, uh, she mentioned that there is going to be a lot about uh, being brave and then uh, sort of a lot of those uh, values that are uh, falling within the category of uh, social and emotional learning. But for us, we kind of need to be more specific. So knowing that B the BBC is thinking about this for 26, 27, that will allow us to get everyone on board to go into a sort of a, a crunched uh, development in order for us to really make sure that this show will fulfill our curriculum needs. And then if you can go to the next slide, this is sort of a, you know, a glimpse of what we uh, talk about when we talk about curriculum. We, this is our approach, a whole child approach. And then what you see here is how we position each piece of content that we work with all of you, creators and producers, and how it really needs to fit a different area. And then it needs to do that in a way that is sustainable for as many seasons as the producers are willing to do, which normally is a lot. So it needs to really kind of start the, the right way in terms of the curriculum. Um, if you want to go to the next slide, and also this is something else that I want to uh, make sure that you all understand, uh, kind of going from what uh, uh, Patricia was saying about the BBC. So we are one single entity, PBS Kids, which is part of the whole PBS system. We focus on kids two to eight, and we are everywhere kids are. Um, and so you see that aside from video content, we have a really, really a robust offering of games. And so that means that we are on a mobile uh, video app, uh, we are on the PBS Kids uh, channel, on live stream, we are on OTT videos, we, are, um, uh, we also are on a podcast, we have podcasts. So all of this just to give the sense that uh, uh, we want to think about the content that we're gonna create together, think about all of these different touch points with the child and their families. And so that means that uh, not just from the get-go, not just we shouldn't talk just about the video content. Let's talk about what are going to be the games or any other extensions that you might be interesting in, and all of that is going to be part of the package. Um, so, and I think that are just sort of a summarizing things. This is a QR code for a submissions portal. I really appreciate if everyone who wants to send us a project that go you send it through that. It helps our evaluation team work through all the projects. But I want to reinforce that we are, our focus is on U.S. audiences and uh, making sure that uh, whatever content we work on has a connective tissue with them. And we are creator uh, focused. We love working with creators. I'm dying to meet Bertie's creator. <laughs> uh, and then our range of contribution, you saw the example that um, that Pat, uh, Patricia showed, it, it, it tends to be between 15 and 35 percent, and that varies because, um, among other things, being a co-commissioner co means that we are leaving a lot of the rights to the producer or to other co-commissioners. Um, among those, uh, we're talking about uh, licensing merchandising, uh, we're talking about, uh, uh, of course, the rest of the world, and we're talking about distribution, which is, um, we do have a, a distribution arm, a PBS distribution, but I know that for Birdie, uh, we're considering another uh, avenue, and Katarina's gonna talk about that. So all of, all of that affects the, uh, uh, our contribution. Uh, but, you know, I think that, uh, I think that provided we follow all of those things, which, you know, not a lot, but not a little, uh, I think we're gonna be able to you know, move in. ahead. You're in, right? I am. Okay, I'm in. good. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Okay, so you're in. Gosh, that's amazing. I mean, it's the first time in my career that in the space of 20 minutes, I've got two of the biggest public broadcasters on board, and I just put it down to experience, really. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah so this is fantastic. We have got the BBC, we've got PBS, we've got our UK studio outside of the M25, but look at that gap. 
Mm. <laughs> it's huge still. And we are probably about sort of uh, 18 months into the process, could be longer. So where are we going to start? I know. Um, in France, <laughs> um, we know we've already got two public broadcasters on board. We know that there are amazing studio capabilities in France, huge experience in long-form animation like this, great, great, really amazing tax credits. And um, we know that working with a French studio who will bring in the French broadcaster is a really good solution to unlock the maximum number of credits. So, Philippe, Alessandri, how lovely that you're here today. <laughs> um, and could you explain to us, how could you come on board as a French studio and maybe bringing in the broadcaster? How does that work for you, please? Well, first thing, uh, we have to have minimum 30% expenses in France to qualify. Uh, and if we want to trigger these nice CNC monies, soft monies, um, we need to have a French broadcaster on board with a license fee of a minimum of 25% of the French contribution. But the good news is, thanks to BBC and PBS being on board, and because the show looks wonderful, I think we have France Television interested. Ooh. <laughs> um, I pitch them all, uh, but as you know, uh, um, M6 and Gulli are not so much anymore into the preschool. TF1 is not looking for educational stuff. Canal Plus was kind of interested, but France Television is much better. They, they invest higher license fees, so let's go for, for France Television. And considering the, 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 the amount of their usual license fee, considering that we can uh, trigger the CNC funding, uh, maybe we can also have some uh, nice selective grants from one of the region. Watch next as a studio in Lille, so we can access regional funding. I think we can probably fund around 40% oh. of uh, uh, the project. Uh, unfortunately, we can't access the tax credits because in France, you have to know that, tax credits is only accessible if we spend up to 70% and more of the budget in our country. But still, if we go to the next slide, you can see that we have a nice um, French contribution with, al with alphabets coming from France Television license fee, 40% uh, coming from the CNC, that's the maximum CNC we can get from uh, on, on, on the series, and regional grants will be 5% of the French contribution, and the French studio will, will invest and defer its overheads uh, to make it happen. That's amazing. That's brilliant. Um, I think you said, though, that France Television want to go into quite a long development period because of how their financial year works, and so they might need to wait a year or so. Is that right, Philippe? Yeah, that's right, and we have, uh, have had an experience with uh, Kate Morton and, and, and Patricia on that. Uh, it's big lizards, uh, and I have to say that... Um, so we came on board as a French co-producer with our data company, Je suis bien content, and which next also, uh, uh, but... After being development, uh, after being developed uh, between BBC, CBBs, and uh, and Bicus, we imposed another year of development, uh, but that was more for preparation, and finally uh, we went into production. So I hope this is not too long. If we have to wait for one more year, well, <clears throat> we have to ask Patricia and Adriano. How's that going to work out for you? That's okay, we love Betty. <laughs> <laughs> and again. Don't say that, you're messing up the no, game. No, no, it's not good. Doesn't work for no, me. No, it doesn't work for me. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> you have to no. come to How Canada. You, Adriana? No, and like I said, this is, this is going to be time well spent developing the show, making sure that uh, whatever we want, we can get out of it in terms of the curriculum matches what uh, the BBC is interested in, what France Television is interested in. So it's all going to make everyone more aligned. Oh my God, you're both going completely off screen. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, have to come to Canada. Yeah, I, I oh, know. I, you know, Alex. Uh, Alex, I know you were speaking to fun. a Canadian co-producer as well, and yes. that's fine. As yes. long as you don't talk to two French companies at the same time, no. never do that. Perish the thought. But <laughs> I mean, this is a game. Yeah. You never know where you will find a broadcaster interested in which country. So be transparent with your partner and say, I'm talking to a Canadian potential co-producer to a French a potential co-producer and the best deal, I will take the best deal. So fair enough if you have to go to Canada. <laughs>
Yeah, well, look, I mean, I think that because of, because of you, when you told me last night that France Television called up and said they forgot that they had a series about a sloth already. <laughs> um, yeah. And, uh, and so consequently, they couldn't come on board anymore. We understand that. We're sorry. We would have loved to have worked with you. It would have been amazing to work with the French studio. We're going to have to go back to the drawing board of this is how it works in international co-production. Luckily... At the same time, we were speaking to other studios around the world. And there's a really lovely synergy with Canada because we've already got a very important North American partner. PBS do have a lot of shows which are made in Canada. And there is also a great synergy between the BBC and the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. So actually, I'd like to pick up on the conversation we had over rosé the other day. <laughs> um, I don't drink rosé. And, um, <laughs> and, and really? have you... Have you <laughs> And have you, Agnes, tell us a little bit about, you know, what would it be like to co-produce in Canada, tax credits, bringing in a broadcaster, studios? Tell us all about that. Well, do you have a map? <laughs> <laughs> so at this point, yeah, co-productions are um, amazing because they allow you to access quite a bit of money and have a lot of partnerships. And uh, we at the Shaw Rocket Fund, a private fund and an equity fund, very excited to see BBC on board and PBS, great partners. That's great for the producer as well. And, um, and looking at our, our fabulous studios in Canada and who we could partner with in order to probably in this scenario for Bertie, about 40% is what we're looking at for financing. And that would mean, um, uh, aligning with a studio, balancing the work, and making sure that you're hopefully going into provinces. Now, as you can see, our federal tax credits and provincial tax credits are, that's only a, a bit of it. <laughs> so when you look at the QR or QR code, there's, there's actually more money in certain provinces that are actually on here, including regional bonuses. Um, there's also what we call a grind, whereas your federal tax credit at 25% is there is a grind, depending on how much provincial money you can actually get. But on the Canadian side, depending how savvy your producer is and how much they know and how they can allocate the work properly to increase that, you can average probably between the federal and provincial tax credits between I averaged it about 40%, but you, could all, you can even get up to 50, depending on how much work you're doing in Canada and how you're splitting it. So in Canada, you, uh, um, the, when you have an international treaty co-production, if you're, if you're Canadian content, it is a 75% spend in order to access the tax credits and 75% of your post. In a treaty um, co-production, um, it's the treaty itself makes whatever is being made in Canada Canadian. So if you follow the treaty, then you can access all the tax credits at the level that you see here based on your budget. But of course, uh, tax credits alone don't make the financing plan. So um, we also would then look at our Ednets in Canada, which is very, very fortunate because as we know, our, our commercial broadcasters in Canada, I can say this very clearly, are, are, are not commissioning as much anymore. Whereas we do have quite a bit of, um, we have provincial uh, educational broadcasters that partner across our country. We call them the Ednets. So you have a knowledge network in BC, we have TV Ontario, and sometimes SRC in Quebec that will come in and help put the license fee together to make it work. The challenge is, is it needs to be 25% in the English language. I'm assuming we're going English with Bertie. Bertie was speaking. Yes. I'm because we're no longer in France. So. <laughs> um, the French are out, don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, in order to get our, your Canada Media Fund uh, money, in addition to the private fund money, which we have a little more flexibility, but the CMF is like the CNC, where you would be having to have the 25% of that budget to trigger, and that's very challenging in Canada today. The good news is, and I can't speak to it um, uh, just yet, because it's fairly new, but the CMF just announced that a Canadian uh, broadcaster can partner with a Canadian distributor, and we don't know where the rights are with that, <laughs> and how that would be split in an international co-production and uh, doing a rest of world uh, distribution, but they combined can now um, access the CMF, but it's fairly new. And this is why it's really important to have a very um, good a co-producing partner in Canada because we have lots of money in the country, but it's a it's a it's a bit of a puzzle and trying to figure out how to maximize it with your partner, but also making sure that you are able to access or try to access what kind of funding is available. The other piece to this, um, in addition to tax credits, which that's a great Ontario tax credit, by the way, <laughs> um, is um, is that there there is a need for distribution advance in addition to the idea of triggering the CMF to close in Canada. So really you'd be able to get about 75% of your money 
in this scenario, maybe a little bit higher, depending on if you were able to get the higher tax credit. And if you were lucky to get maybe add on SRC as a, um, as a license or be able to do a bit more, but that's, that's the expectation. And then, uh, and then comes the split. The Rocket Fund is a equity fund, and so we're also then looking when you structure your puzzle and your deal and how you're putting it together, we want to know where we sit in a very interesting waterfall with very much with looking at all the partners and depending on, on uh, the studio and where they sit and, and where the Rocket Fund could potentially fit in. The CMF also, depending on, and I'm gonna just stop there because we'll have to look it up, but the CMF also sometimes comes in for equity, but not often. So then you're also sharing that on the Canadian side and then with your international partners. So, so in our scenario, there's lots of tax credit money, there's lots of money, but having to piece together the rights and make it make, it make sense. So Birdie, like where, where's, where's Rocket Fund gonna make some money off of Birdie? Well, maybe some L&M and maybe um, some pre-sales, but hopefully not too many pre-sales because that also closes out the marketplace for a return on investment. Thank you. Um, coming from a Canadian company, I can say that the dark arts of the Canadian tax system is something that we leave to the experts. <laughs> so that was amazing to hear all that. Thank you so much. So um, <clears throat> look at where we are now. We have got the BBC, we've got PBS, we've got our UK studio outside of the M25. <laughs> we've got our Canadian studio, we've got a Canadian broadcaster, we've got Canadian tax credits, we've got UK tax credits. We are nearly there. <laughs> it's about two and a half or three years in and we are nearly there. <laughs> We're going to do this, people. We can make it happen. We've got a gap of about 10 or 15 percent. And this is certainly a good moment to speak to a distributor, especially because, as Agnes mentioned, I don't know if you guys realize it, but Bertie's got amazing consumer products potential. <laughs> and we have all collectively identified that. And so uh, uh, to, to talk to a distributor who has capabilities in consumer products and all ancillary rights can really support and come on board across all rights outside of Canada, the UK and the US makes a lot of sense. And luckily we have with us Katrina Pitch here today <laughs> from BBC Studios. And um, Katrina, I hope that this interests you and we'd love to have you on board and cover the rest of the uh, gap if possible. Tell us how that might work, please. Um, yes, obviously we love Bertie. We, we think he's great. Um, I hated that you made it a sloth and make me, are going to make me as a German with problems with the TH say Bertie, Ber <laughs> Bertie plush, sloth plush. <laughs> 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 uh, that's difficult. <laughs> um, uh, uh, anyway, I want to give a quick intro and overview of how we work at BBC Studios Kids and Family and what we can kind of bring on board. In this case, obviously, you're coming to us very late, at a very late stage, so we already have commissioning broadcaster, co-producer, we already have all the funding, so there's only a little small piece missing, which is great, um, but I just wanted to flag that you can also come to us at earlier stages, um, you know, when you have an idea, because we have an amazing in-house development um, and production team, so we can come on board early on project, we can co-develop, we can invest into development, we can make projects market ready. We can help you navigate around a lot of these conversations that are happening uh, or have happened on Bertie already. Um, so I just wanted to stress that. Um, but just to say who we are, we of course the commercial arm of the BBC uh, in the UK. We are a producer, we are an investor, we are a distributing um, entity. Um, we are truly global. I'm still amazed. I've only been here a year. Um, I've done co-production for a long time, but we have offices in 19 countries. We are on the ground in every most important market in all the key markets. We have teams that are specializing in um, digital. We have teams that are experts in CPNL, so we can bring a lot of expertise and knowledge to the table. Um, and we have a dedicated kids and family team, so, so we are truly experts in kids and family content and bringing it to the audiences. So obviously we co-produce, we co-develop, we sell, <laughs> sell and distribute, sorry, I can't even read the slides. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we, we, we are huge on, on digital expansion. Um, we, are, we have just um, founded mm -hmm. a new big audio unit. We're doing a lot of it in this space um, and across all media worldwide, really. Um, we also operate the CBBS and BBC Kids International Services, so we, we can bring additional money to bring the content to those platforms. Um, and as I said, CPNL obviously is hugely interesting for us. We have tons of expertise. We have um, built a global brand with Louis, um, and we have other amazing properties that we are working on. So, 
yes, come to us about CPNL. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and those, just those ones, just to give you an overview, we are really across you know, all genres, all age groups. We are looking for animation. We're doing animation, preschool, older kids. We're doing live action, scripted. We're doing unscripted. We're doing family co-viewing. YA, young YYA is a big space for us at the moment that we're looking into. Um, what makes a property like, you know, something like Bertie interesting for us is obviously global appeal or, or as much international appeal as possible. Bertie cer certainly has this. In this case, it's really attractive because although we are nearly fully funded, we only have two and a half territories in the world gone. So we have the UK gone, um, we have the US gone, but there's still a lot of distribution we can do. Mm -hmm. um, so that's obviously really important for us because the level of investment we can bring or the amount of money we can bring to the table depends on the rights that are available. Mm -hmm. um, with the CPL, CPNL potential, we can bring more money than just for a pure distribu distribution deal on, let's say, linear rights or... Um, I think we can go to the next slide. I think we don't have another slide. Oh, we don't I, have another I, slide. I, I did have a question for you, though. Yeah. Um, you know, in terms of, um, by the way, are you calling Canada a half territory? <laughs> As in, yeah, I'm sorry, and I did. Well, sometimes it is. <laughs> on behalf of my fellow oh Canadians, don't quote me on this one. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's 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 like North America has gone. As I'm, as I mean, it's, it's yes. like it's, it's a lot of the times in distribution terms, people so, say but I it's like, don't do that anymore. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> I love Canada. <laughs> just um, saying. <laughs> I just wanted to ask you though about advances and minimum guarantees. Yeah. They are sometimes you know, both called the same thing, they can mean the same thing, they can mean yeah. different things. But can you just tell us a bit how that actually works in reality with the minimum guarantee in advance? Because obviously we are going to need that from you to cover this gap. Yeah. Is that up front? Does it come at the end? How does it work? Well, it, there's no fixed model, ah. I would say. Um, it, it's always depending on the partners and depending on what's needed. Yeah. But yes, of course, if, if this is needed for the gap and to close the financing to get this into production, we, we will bring it to the table. Yeah. Um, it's some and percentages, again, depending on the model, the partners and what's needed. Um, we will then recoup this in first place from the sales we do. Mm -hmm. um, we will take a commission, of course, for the sales we do. Um, but apart from that, it's pretty straightforward. Okay, so is that a yes? Yeah. Are you on board? I love the, the sloth plush. <laughs> 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 oh my goodness, we have a full house! <laughs> <laughs> look at that beautiful pie, just, just take it in for a second. <laughs> I mean, it's, this, is, this is what keeps us up at night, it's what keeps me up at night, this kind of thing. <laughs> um, but here we have a full house, we've got all our partners on board, happy days, we are ready to go, we're ready to kick off final <laughs> development, pre-production, full production, and then bring Bertie the Sloth to the world. <laughs> Isn't everyone so excited about this? <laughs> 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 so um, that basically concludes our session. This is the important one. You really want to download this. It is the most fantastic um, sort of uh, playbook for, for the latest information. And of course, this changes the whole time on top tips, on um, different treaties, on uh, d different funds that are available, places that you can go to talk about co-productions. It's really um, an incredible document that's been put together by the production team. Which um, is amazing, by the way. Thank you. Yeah. No, you've ever seen yeah. anything like this. Um, we're going to have time for questions, I think. Yes. Um, so I think we will be opening the floor now to take questions. There's a couple of people there, I see. Uh, g'day, blokes and sheilers. I was just wondering <laughs> how you feel about diving down under. <laughs> uh, Aussies. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> how, how would you feel with wor about working with Australians? Oh. Absolutely. Really good. I mean, it's a bit far away, so the time, the time difference can be a little bit difficult sometimes, but as long as you guys do the morning calls. Mm. Great. <laughs> Are you happy to work with Australia? Be believe it or not, we have done two co-productions with Australia. Um, one in my previous position uh, uh, at Teleimage Zodiac Group, 
was called Sally Bollywood. We uh, pr produced, co-produced two seasons with uh, Seven Network at that time. The show was running on pop in the UK, um, and it was France Television on board. And uh, we have done more recently with Watch Six Media, Nate is Late, with uh, Nine Network. And I think it's working quite well. We have a treaty between France and Australia. It's not an easy treaty because it's a treaty uh, that concerns theoretically uh, only features <laughs> and the balance between the two co-producers has to be 40-60. Now, you can ask for exception uh, for series and Screen Australia accepted and then that was the most challenging one. We can ask for an exception and go down to 20% for the minority partner and Screen Australia finally accepted uh, that the Australian co-producer would be only 20% because of the license fee in Australia uh, uh, being not that high. Um, but, but it worked well, and we sold the show internationally. It, it's on pop in the UK. I'm a big fan of Australia co-productions. I have to say, I've, I've done a lot um, in, the, in the past, um, and it works amazingly well. The time difference, yes, can be challenging, especially if you don't have a US partner on board. The calls in the middle of the night are quite tricky, but apart from that, um, some great funding opportunities in Australia as well uh, for both live action and animation. And the good thing is when we ask in the studio in France, is there someone volunteer to go to Australia to supervise the work? Yeah, you have 10 <laughs> ends raising up. <laughs> We, Welcome to stay at my house. Yeah. <laughs> we do, we do. C Canada does quite a bit of co-productions with Australia, yeah. and also more New Zealand, we're seeing quite a bit, and we're used to time zone differences. <laughs> mm -hmm. I am up at all hours. Um, and, um, and I think that um, we also have um, Canada's uh, public broadcaster, the CBC, which was not on there, but it's also our, our national um, broadcaster, has an arrangement with Australia, with ABC Australia, as well as... Um, with a certain arrangements with the BBC that are, are still, you know, I'm not sure of, they don't work always 100%, but they are working uh, on some level. And um, so we definitely um, are open. In fact, I just want to say the way the state of the world is, uh, we used to see on average in Canada in the last probably five or six years, one or two co-productions a year at the Rocket Fund. And we get, as you know, um, or you may not know, but we do get you know hundreds and hundreds of applications. And, um, and this year, I think we're close to probably 20, if not more, that we're seeing. So the, there's definitely an increase in co-production activity. But my only advice would be take a look at the treaty to your point about whether or not it's, it's feature film or not, that most of the trees, unfortunately, are about 30 years old. And so you just, you have to be able to look at the treaty and see what they are. And then again, partner with someone who understands it to help you maximize it and be, know the tip, go and ask and, and be able to get approval for perhaps a different structure, which I believe a lot of the um, agencies are doing now. Uh, and of course, there's the amazing funding from Screen Australia, which is always such a benefit. And there are so many synergies between certainly the UK, Canada and Australia. There has been so much sharing of content over the years. So I think that's a fantastic idea. We're coming to your house. Yeah, we just need you to lobby <laughs> a little bit more the government because mandatory investment have to come back. As you all know, Australia had this wonderful mandatory investment for private broadcasters until a few years ago. And the Conservative uh, government delete that all and now it's only ABC left but hopefully the US platforms will contribute. So if you could just work on that please Tim. <laughs> uh, I'll take the next question now was it over here I think. Yeah. Um, I have a question about uh, you just mentioned lobbying the government. Um, how do you deal with um, approaching governmental organizations when it comes to special situations when they don't match like what the industry needs are? I think Throughout CMC, we've talked about how the UK tax credits don't match the rest of the world. How do you approach lobbying that government and dealing with, you know, governmental bodies that deal with those, that's, with those credits? That's one for you, Patricia. Good luck. <laughs> well, you know, we continuously speak to them um, just to make them see, you know, how important it is for us to be, uh, continue to be a, a really strong creative force because the UK has always had an amazing talent in terms of you know, content made for children. And it's really sad to see that there is less and less investment coming from, you know, from the broadcasters or streamers that uh, operate in this country. But you know, I can't actually lobby for anything in terms of you know, 
making sure that uh, that that we get um, uh, those tax credits. What I can do is I can talk to them and just show them the the good that we're doing and how much we are investing and how that is actually creating a great impact, not only in the creative um, you know uh, cohort but also in children. And that's my job to make sure that the government is aware of you know how important it is the the you know what we're doing in this country and then for them to understand as well. You know, I always do, do try to give them examples of what's happening in other countries and how having a certain type of uh, incentives that can actually help create more content that is culturally relevant to that audience is going to help not just the children but also the, the industry. And that's what I do. So I, I do speak to them quite often in, in that sense. I think we had another question somewhere around there. Hi, um, I'm Lucy, I'm from Interference Pattern in Edinburgh. Congratulations on getting Bertie finance so quickly. <laughs> well done and going into production. Thank you. May I ask, now that you're in production, the series has been made, who owns what? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Good question. No. That's the question we were hoping to avoid. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so who um, owns because, what? what? Well, what? It's, a, it's such a good question. And you're absolutely right. We decided to keep it top line because uh, that's such an important part of the equation. It's such a major part of the negotiation with each one of these partners. Um, but you can certainly assume that there is back end taken by all the major investors to some degree or other. But I'll let you speak for yourselves. I, I can. <laughs> well, um, I can jump in and just say that the ownership is has to be in the treaties. Is that if it's forty percent of the money coming from Canada, forty percent of the ownership has to be in Canada. Um, but there's ownership of copyright, and then there's ownership of rights and value that way. So, and also, so the Canadian marketplace would be off the table, and the UK marketplace would be off the table when you're doing your negotiation. But we can speak then that really what it comes down to though is is about the rights and who's exploiting the rights and how we participate. And I think that's the, the biggest question when you're looking at putting something like this together. Same in France, 30%, 40 percent contribution, 40 percent equity share. Yeah. Yeah. I think that in the US, as I alluded to, um, we tend to focus on the licensing rights of all the platforms that uh, we talked about, and that is, uh, you know, uh, it's not ownership, it's a licensing. And then we really uh, uh, leave uh, anything such as uh, licensing merchandising rights to be uh, uh, owned by the producer, by the original producers, uh, whoever uh, they might be. So I think that uh, oh, in this case in particular, uh, we will be negotiating about uh, a rev share, a uh, back end rev share. Um, uh, relative to our investment, uh, but that will be it. Mm. In our case, we will not be owning any of this. Uh, we will, of course, you know, be uh, under terms of trade, which in the UK, you know, uh, kind of determine, you know, the, the type of license we we take and and how much, you know, back end we're going to be getting from, you know, from the from the property. But yes, the ownership is uh, for the producer and the creator. Yeah, but I do want a plush. Yeah, <laughs> sloth, sloth plush. A sloth plush. A sloth plush. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. No, no. Sorry. But maybe tell you uh, the way we approach it on the UK French co-production because we have three uh, currently in uh, in development or production, and usually what we do is we consider that it, each co-producer has to pay the back end of of its national broadcaster. So the back end of the BBC will be paid by the English. Uh, co-producer and we will pay the back end to France Television. And it's important to keep it like that. Copyright sits with creators and co-producers um, and it's only a back end for, for broadcasters because there's a legal difference between copyright, uh, obviously, yeah. and yeah. revenue yeah. share. And uh, one of the complexities, of course, is the waterfall as it's called, the lovely waterfall, when you've got different people participating and you have to, uh, people are recouping investments in first or second or third position and people are getting back in and you've got a lovely waterfall, which um, hopefully you have smart finance people to work out for you. Um, but it is, it is a whole level of complexity we decided not to go into. We're gonna go to the next question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Hi, David Levine, uh, independent consultant. So uh, how does this picture change when it's kids 6 to 11? And there's no plush, and maybe not so much <laughs> merchandising. So, and, and make it more difficult. A live action, non-musical show. I know, Alex, you've pulled this off recently, but how does it change for the rest of you? That's a good question. Um, I'm going to throw it over to you. Well, it is harder to find probably that last little gap of the investment. What I would say is I would actually try to involve a distributor quite early on so that they, they might also come in as a co-producer. Because if uh, by the time we get there, there's nothing left and there's no merch or anything you know, to, to put that money towards, then you know, we're not going to be able to close that gap. Mm -hmm. So what I would say is get as, as, as soon as possible um, a producer on board, another, another you know, producer distributor on board that can actually bring the rest of the financing together before we, you know, we are uh, too far down the line. Mm -hmm. yeah. no, you can come to us. <laughs> we, we can co-produce, we can produce, we have the production hubs uh, nationally and internationally and um, can invest more money if we don't just distribute. In Canada, you'll get less tax credits because the animation tax credit adds quite a bit. So then you're now reducing, looking probably closer to 30% of tax credits for that. But the one thing about live action partnerships, which can be good depending on how universal they are and whether or not they make sense for both countries, I think that's very critical to it makes sense. But live action, the one thing that's great is it goes into the marketplace quickly and, and usually um, based on 18 months of animation, by the time you get your co-production together and get it into the marketplace, how long that is, whereas live action can be attractive for that reason. So in that case, you might be able to um, add other distribution, and it would be distribution partners or territories. And Australia. maybe this time we'll de you'll decide uh, to go for the tough uh, but profitable tripartite co-production yes. and yes. say, France and Canada have a treaty, Canada and uh, UK have a treaty, let's do a tripartite co-production. Mm -hmm. So we reduce the gap to zero and we are in profit in first dollar. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Germany is an At interesting option for live action. They, they can co-produce, but they don't need any production work done in Germany. You know, somebody like ZDF or NDR, um, they, they could come on board for this kind of content. Mm -hmm. And I think it's great that uh, you're going to go for that tripartite treaty because uh, mm -hmm. in our case in particular, because we go up to uh, eight, I think that uh, in a live action produced outside the U.S., which we're quite interested in live action content, I think that uh, that, uh, that would mean that we're going to be out of the picture. Uh, but then we'll be just uh, looking forward to watching it. Um, <laughs> I, will say, I will say, though, that the example that Patricia mentioned, Odd Squad, it is live action. It is non-musical except for a couple of episodes and it is um, 6 to 11. But that particular uh, series, that particular franchise originated with PBS, PBS Kids. And so it's a really something that we treasure. And then the, uh, the, the possibility of doing something with the BBC where we're showing to our viewers who are very familiar with Odd Squad that you know, there is an Odd Squad office in the UK uh, we couldn't resist. I mean, they, we, f we felt that that was a great opportunity, and it was working with new partners such as the BBC, but also with uh, long-standing partners such as Sinking Ship and uh, Fred Rogers Productions. So that felt like a really uh, comfortable shoe for us to step into, even though, like, you know, a different example, depending on what that is, would, uh, it would most likely be something, it would be a non-starter for us. Yeah, and I would say that things are getting very complicated. And as you can see, everything is different. Every single deal is going to be different. And one thing that I know and I'm noticing is that there's more and more consultants coming into the market that actually are helping uh, pull all this together because it is quite complicated and we all need the help. Because the, the worst thing you can do is, uh, you know, say you want a show, you commission it, and then you have to wait around for two, three years until the finance gapping is, you know, the gap of the finance is put together. So what I would say, you know, is, is if, you don't, if you don't have those relationships with broadcasters, I think it's very important to go to the broadcasters uh, to begin with as well, to understand if you can bring those together and then all those tax credits, all those other incentives come with them, public service broadcasters. 
do find a consultant that can maybe you know open doors for you and and put you in in contact with the right people mm -hmm. yeah and um i do we have time for a last question yeah okay has anyone got a question thank you uh david wax lrg media um it's with regards to co-productions with streamers um can you just briefly uh, mention how you're finding that going uh, with regards to combining broadcasters and major streamers and then address the question about um, windows and when things can be played where and how you're feeling about that or how you're feeling the broadcasters are dealing with working with streamers? It's not easy, but this is possible. Um, I'm going to take an example. We were lucky enough to grab the, the rights for Hello Kitty and decided to do a 3D uh, animation series for preschoolers. Um, we decided to walk away from a deal with another platform who didn't want to curve out even our domestic territory. And we decided to accept the offer from Amazon Kids Plus because they wouldn't pay more than 25% of the budget and they would allow us to have terrestrial broadcasters, which was very interesting for us. First, because the rights holder wanted very much uh, the series to be well exposed to drive licensing, and also because that would have been difficult for us to walk through the market and say to our usual uh, uh, partners, Super OTL or Pop or whatever, wh whoever, and say, sorry, this time we have a big license, we have a big franchise, and we are doing that with a platform. So we uh, succeed in having Amazon Kids Plus, plus Super OTL, um, M6, Canal Plus, uh, and Hi Yo-Yo in Italy. And it worked quite well. I would have to say, I have to say that it was also very helpful in the creative, uh, because um, when it comes to the creative, the platform is used to um, drive the content a lot, and maybe is uh, looking to Americanize it a little bit. Um, and if we wouldn't have so many European broadcasters uh, with such a financial contribution, we may have ended up having a shield leader Hello Kitty uh, and not having a construction Hello Kitty. Mm -hmm. uh, and we wanted to show that girls can be whatever they want because it's uh, basically the concept that uh, Hello Kitty changed costume to help her friends. And Amazon wanted to uh, Kitty to be a cheerleader and we wanted her to be also a construction Kitty. And so I think that uh, thanks to the balancing of the financing, uh, we achieved what we wanted to uh, for on the creative level. Um, I think we probably don't have time for any more questions. Is that right? Is it time to wrap it up? Okay, so that's the end of the session, but I hope you all have a wonderful evening. Thank you very, very much.